Okay, everybody, welcome back to Lisboa. You came back, and you uh, must want to see some more very simple and yet very deep building action. So, where were we? Okay, right, I finished my turn. It's Jen's turn. First of all, her ship doesn't come home because she doesn't have any, and she's going to play a card. Now, I haven't really talked much about Jen's situation in life. She's got this special power that she wants to collect three, you know, full sets. Well, everybody wants to do that as fast as possible because when you do a full set, you increase your overall business. You can store more stuff. You can have more action cards in play. Plus, every set is worth three points, although in Jen's case, it's worth four points two times potentially over the course of the game. So Jen would like to do that. How do you get these cubes? By building. And so, I think Jen wants to build. And so, where's the building action? Right over here. So, in the, in the same way I wanted to build a ship first round, Jen wants to trigger this action, but this is a big action. Jen cannot just do some local business herself and then give up some tools because, well, to, because the big action can only be gotten by visiting the court. So, does Jen actually have, yes she does. She has two different cards that if she wants to play these not to increase her business but to visit the court, either one of these would let her get to the master builder to build her first building and grab some terrain over there. But by doing that, she'll be giving up on these icons by expanding her business. Now, if she did this, it would give her one state official and it would increase her influence ability, collection ability by one. If she did, ooh, if she did this, it won't increase her influence options, but it will let her pick any one of these cubes as part of setup. A bunch of rubble is put out in all these pre-spot you know, randomly, and then there's some extra cubes left over that must represent some other part of the town that is destroyed. That um, you know, So if Jen did this, she'd be able to claim one of these cubes. And remember, she wants cubes as fast as possible. And if she used either of these to go to the the palace, she's giving up that action, so she's not going to use this. She wants to use this for her business. Jen is going to make a royal visit, so it's this one. All right, now that means, first of all, she marks this because when somebody visits the royal palace, potentially all the players can piggyback. Jen has gone to visit the royal builder, and after Jen is done dealing with him, I have the option, if I've got royal favors, and I do, I could spend those royal favors to piggyback off of Jen's action and get to do a bonus thing on her turn. So that's why we put her marker here so that everybody remembers Jen is the one who started this. Because, heck, if all players all piggyback off her, it could be a very big, long, complicated thing. So, anyway, Jen's coming here. She's given up on both of these bonuses, and she is going to visit the royal builder um, to get access to these actions. Now, to visit a character... Uh, Division 1 of 3 means you have to give up some of your influence to get through the door. And there's a reminder of how much it is right here. You have to, uh, to, to get into either of the, these guys, you have to um, check the current economic state of the world, um, which is right here. And remember, because I built a ship, the economy, or the royal treasury, I think the rules call it the royal treasury, but I just like to think of it as the economy. The economy has gotten better. That means these guys are in a good mood, and the cost in influence to get to see them has just dropped by one. If the economy were tanking, it were way down here, then they would be very busy. They wouldn't have as much time to accept us, and we would have to spend more influence to get through the door. But as it is, the economy has gotten better. So it's easier to get to see them, because they're happy with us, because we've helped improve the economy. So, how much influence is this value, um, plus however many other state officials are in the way? Because you got to kind of push your way through all the people in court to get to your target. Now, at the beginning of the game, as part of setup, each player um, gets one of gets a state official here in the uh, at, at the prime minister's office. But in a two-player game, we also put a dummy official in each one. Now, Jen is not going to the Prime Minister. She is going over here to the Royal Builder. There is one guy who does not belong to her. You know, it's a state official belonging to the dummy player. So, Jen has to spend one influence to get past this guy. If Jen wanted to get to the Prime Minister, she'd have to spend two influence. Because, I mean, her own guy doesn't block her, but my guy and the dummy blocks her. So, Jen would have to spend two influence to get to the Prime Minister. But she's not going to the Prime Minister. She's going to the Builder. So, she needs to spend one influence plus whatever the economy is. She has to spend one 
one, but there's a discount here because the economy is good. So Jen gets in here for free. She doesn't have to spend any of her influence, which means she can hold on to it to use it for extra money in case she needs it. And she might because building is expensive. So Jen spends her influence. And again, you know, if I had previously come over here, then there'd be two guys blocking. So that'd be two influence minus one. Jen would have to spend one influence. But as it is, Jen gets in. And so once you visit the person, you get to first, you have the option of doing one of these two actions, and then you must do the primary action. Now, this is why Jen came here. She came here for the primary action. But um, she will also do one of those. And she does that first. So she could, if she wants to, take two of her own state officials and deploy them into two. So she could go like this and this, or like this. She can't put them both in the same. She could put two state officials in two different offices. And that then becomes a blocker for me. Um, so like if Jen goes like this, now it got more expensive for me to visit the Royal Builder, as an example. So that's interesting. And then Jen could also put another one over here so it gets more expensive for me to visit the king or even more expensive for me to visit the prime minister if Jen wanted to do that. But like I said, you, cannot, you can't put two in the same spot. Or instead of getting more state officials, she could instead get another blueprint. Remember, at the beginning of the game, we started with one blueprint. Jen's got a blueprint, which it's a green blueprint, which means she has access to build the, uh, the theater of St. Carlos, the Teatro de St. Carlos. I have a blue blueprint, so that means I could build um, the uh, Duagua, or whatever it is. Sorry, I don't know how to say these Spanish names. Anyway, so if Jen wanted, she could get another blueprint, either blue or green, which means she would, I mean, the more blueprints you have, the more of these state buildings you can build. And now it's interesting. Building your own building is very expensive. It costs a lot of money, um, and you have to do it with this action. And um, once you have built it, you can actually start running that business to generate goods that you could then use to make money by selling them by ship or to bribe officials. If you build, if you instead visit the prime minister, or I'm sorry, not the prime minister, if you visit the king to build a state office, because the king comes and does the ribbit come, cutting ceremony on your state office, you build in these outer areas. And to build there, you don't have to spend money to build these because they're state run. You don't have to spend money. The state will spend the cost to build these big um, elaborate structures. But you have to have a blueprint, and everybody starts with a blueprint, and you have to have state officials to occupy that building. And so so that's why I think right now, Jen, remember, she gets to do one of these things. She could take another blueprint or state officials. Jen is going to take two state officials. She'll put one here. So that's kind of blocking access. And what the heck? She'll put one over here. So it's even more expensive for me to get to the prime minister now. So she has done that action and opted not to do that. And now she will build a building. She's the first to do it. So she can build in any of these spaces. But the cost, and I mentioned this up front, is equal to however much rubble is in those spaces, plus, I forgot to mention this right up front, plus the current state of the economy. And so this is actually bad for Jen. Because the economy has improved, hey, it was easier to get through the front door. But because the economy has improved, it's more expensive to build stuff. And so to build, uh, say, in uh, this zone right here is going to cost four plus the cost of this rubble plus the cost of this rubble minus one of the cubes. Because every time you build, you get to claim one of them. You permanently clear the cube out, which increases your overall business. Then you got to pay for the remainder of the stuff that's there, and you build your building. So Jen's got to figure, which of these spaces do you want to build in? Well, the question is, which can she afford? Because we only start with 10 bucks. Although, if Jen wants to, she can sacrifice um, one, two, three, four. Jen could get one, two, three, four. She could get up to four more bucks depending on how much of her influence. If she gives up two influence, she gets one, or two, or three, or four more bucks. So she has up to $14 to spend, or real, to spend to build a building. So what else does she want to think about? Well, wherever she builds, she's going to get a benefit. If she builds right here, she gets um, a cloth, which she could bribe the uh, king with. If she builds over here, she would immediately get to do a clergy action to get another clergy if she builds in that space. She builds over here, she gets some gold. She builds over here, she gets a decree. She would be the first to be able to claim one of these, and that would give her bonus points and help her build an overall strategy. Speaking of these, now this is interesting. Here's another thing. I haven't talked about the decrees at all. As part of setup, eight of them come out randomly. Over the course of the game, you want to collect these because they give you opportunities for points. The interesting about, about these decrees, there's eight of them out here. They often 
can combo together very well because they'll benefit different things. Like, let me rearrange these. I'll put the letter ones next to each other as an example. Uh, da, da, da. And I'll put these two because these, because they come in a few different types. So I'm just going to, you know, you can put them however you want, but I'm just rearranging them so they're kind of ordered by type. Every one of these decrees has to do with building shops, which is what Jen's about to do. If she, um, if she takes this decree, every shop she builds is worth an extra victory point at the end of the game. If she takes this one, every shop she builds that is brown. And brown means that it is a bookstore, or rather, that it generates the brown resource. So their their books, their their laws, their legal offices, their brown type buildings. The, every every brown building she builds is worth two points if she has this, as opposed to any building. Period is worth one point. This one is every building she builds in row C is worth two points. This one is every building built in row B, it doesn't matter by anybody, by her or by anybody else, scores her one point. And this one is if she has the most or is tied for the most buildings in row D, she gets five points. So you could see if you get a few of these, they can combo together really nice. Like Jen might want to get this brown one um, and that means she'd want to build a legal library book building because it'll be worth two points. And if she builds it down here and gets the D, she's starting to work on a majority of this row. So that means, you know, if she wants to get both of these, she should build um, here. Now, actually, that means she could either build in this space and have access to the brown road or this space and have access to the brown road. If she builds here, that gives her two state, and she already has two state representatives. If she builds here, this gives her another book. Now, there's another consideration for building. There is the cost. Some places cost more than others. What's the most expensive place to build? It looks like because there's two earthquake here and one. These are cost three. These cost two. So this is the most expensive column because it costs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is the most expensive row. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the most expensive place to build right now. Row C in this spot, either to build on the pink road or the brown road. So she doesn't want to build there because that's crazy expensive. But there is a reason she would want to build in this column. These were put out randomly as part of setup. The, uh, anything that gets built in this column, are, this is the most valuable column in the game to build in because the, the buildings built in this column have the potential to earn multiples of five points at the end of the game. The ones built in this column only have the potential to earn multiples of three. Now, how many multiples of three you earn is based on how many state buildings. Because uh, you know, if, if state building gets built here by the end of the game, um, it will affect every shop that's in this row. Or I should say, every pink and every blue shop that's in this row. And what that means is, if this is built here, and um, you know, Jen builds a. Uh, a blue shop. This little notch indicates it's pointing this direction. So this is a blue shop that Jen builds. If this state thing is here, she will get four times one. She will get this building is worth four points to her. If later on she builds something up here like, like this, she can build it because it's a blue, so it can be built on this blue column. That means there's one, two. Two times four means this building would be worth eight points. So the more of these state buildings you have that feed into the shops you own, the more your shops are worth. So there is a lot, a lot to con wait, which one was, yeah, this was it. There is a lot to consider when you're thinking about where you want to build. Um, right, and this came from over there. Okay, so. I'm thinking, looking at this, well, Jen doesn't have a lot of money, so she wants to build a bit. What's the cheapest place to build? The cheapest place to build, I think, is right here, because water damage is the easiest to get rid of. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This space, this space right here only costs nine bucks to build in. Plus, remember, before she builds, she will get to claim one of these cubes, so it just got three bucks cheaper. So if she claims this cube, this space only costs one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. It costs exact, and that's exactly how much money Jen has. This is where she's going to build. So she's going to build here, and she has to choose whether she's going to build a brown, a legal building, or a blue, a tool building. Since there is bonus points to be had for blue buildings, I think Jen has made her choice. Jen is going to build. She could build a gold, a uh, a fabric, a book, or a tool building. Jen 
or you know, or a second. I mean, th th this little one, this is functioning exactly the same. It's just thematically, this part of the downtown Lisbon area is smaller. So functionally, it works exactly the same. It's just a little bit tinier. There's two places you could build tools. Jen is going to build a legal bu uh, business. She is going to build it right here. All right. And now, um, so what happens is you choose where you're going to build. You immediately claim one of the rubble that's associated with that spot. She'll take this one and she'll put it over here. So she's starting to do set collection and she just reduced the cost of building here by three. So now she's got to pay. The economy is at four. So that's four, five, six. We don't have to move these here, but just as a reminder, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It costs Jen exact. That's exactly what she had. So she is totally broke, but now she will take one of her buildings and claim the space. Here's another decision. There are three, Jen can take the bottom from any of these three columns. And um, these, uh, um, building these things give her different benefits. Building in this column, if she builds this, it doesn't do anything. But then if she builds this one later on, this means she can use money instead of influence to go visit the royal court if she has a lot of money. Um, but I think she's going to build this one. Building here gives her a special power. So she has built her first building. It cost her 10 bucks. It started to do her set collection, which is what she want, is all about. She has built a legal building. And because she came here, she gets a book resource immediately. All these things you get to pick up, they represent stuff that you find in the rubble when you start building. Because, I mean, when the city got destroyed, there was tons and tons of stuff left behind. So you find stuff as you're building, and um, you can convert that into stuff. So Jen just got an extra little bonus. She's made a legal office. She's got legal stuff. Now, before she generates any legal stuff, her, her office is full. So before too long, she's going to want to sell some of this legal stuff um, to make some more money so she can build more buildings. But anyway, so she has built. It cost her 10 She got a bonus. And um, that's it, right? Yeah, it's a, there's, a, there's a lot. There's so much that goes into it. She's starting to do her set collection. And uh, yeah, that's it. For why do I feel like I'm forgetting something out of building a building? Because it is the single biggest, most complex thing you do in the game. But I'm sure that's it. Let me just double check. Oh, man. Um, I'm still new to this game, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, let's see. Open a pu No, not public building. A regular building. Uh, da, 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 da. Choosing. All right, yeah. We choose our house. Build a store. Yeah, no, oh, the last thing is, if there was already a state building in her row or in her column, she would score points immediately. She, but there aren't any state buildings. But later on, when the state buildings get built, she will retro, retroactively score points for this. So anyway, but she scores no points for it right now, but that'll come later. Phew. All of that from Jen playing one card. But she is on the board. She's totally broke. But now, remember, her turn is over. But if I want... I can follow off her, and I think I will. I am, because I have a royal favor that lets me get a free visit to the master builder. I will spend that royal favor. It comes back up here. I can collect that again later if I want. And now I have to pay prestige as well. As you recall, the prestige was, oh, it's a bit more expensive now. It's minus one. There are two guys blocking here. So that means I have to, they don't belong to me, so I have to spend two minus one. I have to spend one prestige. But that's okay, because I'm loaded. I got tons of prestige. So I spent one prestige to get to the master builder. And now, in Jen's case, she got to do one of these and this. For me, kind of piggybacking off of her, I just get to choose one of these. So I can do this, this, or this. And you know what? While I'm here, I should probably build a building too, because that's the whole point of this game. There's so many things you can do, but the name of the game is Rebuilding Lisboa. So I probably want to build a building as well. So I've got to go through all that same thought process that Jen did. I mean, I've only got 10 bucks as well. Although again, I've got so much prestige or influence, I could dump some of it to get more money so I could build in a more expensive place. And the interesting thing is I can see, oh, Jen built a brown building. I bet she wants to get that decree, doesn't she? And here's the thing. If I build a brown building now, next round, I'm the first player. I could visit the prime minister potentially and get this decree right out from underneath her and so that every brown building would be worth two points for me instead of her. Or do I want to save some cash? Or do I want to think more about, hey, what kind of item do I want to get? Remember, I, I like um, zipping around the thing. If I build up here, hey, I will immediately get to get another um, clergy thing. Or if I build right here, I get five bucks. 
So that, pre that I mean, that, that, this is a cheap place to build. And it could still be a brown or a blue building. So I could still go for this and snag it out from under Gen. That means I'd be building in row A. There are no bonuses for row A. There's bonuses for rows B, C, and D. Now, row A bonuses might come out. Now, all of these were for building houses. Th these two bonuses were for building state buildings. Every state building you build on the west side is worth an extra point. Every state building you build on the east side is worth two points, but only if it was from the green architect. And right now, I've only got a plan from the blue architect. And then this one is, whoever is tied for or has the most decrees at the end of the game gets five points. So these are all valuable things. Do, do, um, all right, so anyway, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna buy. Oh, if I build over here, I could immediately snag this decree, but then I would be building either a gold, I mean, mm. if I build over here, I could get a cube of my choice, and then I'd have two of the three cubes I need to expand my business. Goodness gracious. Oh, I do like the idea of just getting more money. More money, more money, more problems. But, so if I build here, that is, well, Jen has already made it, because she took this cube away, Jen has already made it cheaper to build in these other places because she removed that cube. So it's, um, to build here, it gets me five back, although I still have to pay full up front. So it, I, it would cost me four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because I would get rid of this. So it would only cost me nine to build here, and then I get five. So it only cost me four to build in that spot. Oh my gosh, how can I say no to that? You know what? I'm going to pay. So I'm following. I get to do one of these actions. I've already paid my prestige to talk to the guy. I'm going to do a build action. I'm going to build right up there, yo. And it's just going to be cheap. Now, here's the problem. I can't build brown because Jen already built brown. I can build blue, pink, or gold. This is not going to refill until the end of Jen's turn. So if I want to build here, I can't build brown, I'll go on ahead and build blue, y'all. So I'm building right there. Okay, now, first of all, when you build, you remove a cube. So I'm taking that, so it just made it cheaper by three bucks. It's just three bucks cheaper to build there. And so I gotta pay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine bucks. I get one buck change. And then the benefit I get there is five bucks back. Boom. All right, and so now I pick any of these so I could do, you know, Jen took this one. This increases how much I make during production. I get to make extra stuff out of whatever my building is. This makes it cheaper to build more ships if I want to build more ships. And this means I can use money instead of influence when visiting the, the palace or the nobles. I already have enough influence, so I don't care about that. Do I want to make it cheaper to build more ships? Or do I want to produce more stuff? Well, I'll, I'll make it cheaper to build more ships. So I'm taking this. I have unlocked it. So now, every time I build a ship, it costs me one less good. Because remember, the bigger the ship, the more goods it costs. So it's cheap for me to build ships. I have built a ship building thing there. Um, I got my benefit back. And um, yeah, so that was all piggybacking off of Jen. And now, Jen's turn is over. So at the end of her turn, th um, things refill. So there's another opportunity to build a brown and a blue building. Let's see what else happened. Oh, nobody did any... So Jen just has to pick one of these cards to go into her hand because she played a card that triggered all of that stuff. So what does Jen want to do? You know what? Jen likes this because then, boom, that, she uses this as an action. This gives her her other cube without having to spend a lot of money to build. So she'll take this one. Boom. All right, and that reveals a new one. And remember, once three of these four stacks have been completely emptied out, that triggers the mid-game mid scoring shift up where these new, more powerful cards come available. So that was Jen's very, very big turn. Made more so because it was my turn. Now it's my turn again. Hey, at the beginning of my turn, I have a ship. But you know what? Jen, if she had shipped her goods... This, we would have marked it like this. She would have made money. I would have made points. And then this would be saying, hey, you can go on ahead and remove these goods to indicate that the ship has returned and is ready to refill. But Jen didn't ship any goods. So my ship is still ready to go. It didn't sail anywhere. So we don't. But now I got five cards. I'm going to play one. And what do I want to do? Remember, this is the new card I got. I could use this to go and... Oh, oh and see, this card that Jen played goes away. Right. So there we go. So I could go visit the king. The king would let me... Um, build a uh, public building. So I could um, you know, build it on this row or this column to make my particular... But if I build it in this column, then... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. This is Jen's column. She's got the, the brown building. I've got blue. I would want to build in this column because I could... If I build here, here, and here, if I just build a bunch of tool shops and then fill this space up, 
all of my tool shops will be worth extra points based on these columns. And it, randomly, this is the most valuable column. Both of us are in the second most, or the tied for second most valuable column in the game. So do I want to build a public building now? Um, to build a public building, though, remember, I need to have um, public officials, and I don't have very many public officials. So uh, you know, I, I, when I visited here, I could have made some public officials, but instead, I chose to build a building. Do I want to make some money? I've got six bucks. I might want to go on ahead and do a shipping action this turn, which means not visiting the royal palace, but instead doing building. Because remember, when you do business, you have a choice. You can either bribe the officials or you can sell stuff to make money. And um, you know, I know Jen's gonna, Jen is definitely going to sell stuff to make money because she's totally broke. So I know she's going to use my boat. Now that's interesting. Maybe that means this turn, I want to build another boat because then there's um, the potential. Now I could either upgrade the boat I've got just by paying the difference, or I could have another boat built. And remember, I get a discount on building boats now. So you better believe I am all naval all the time. I am definitely going to build another boat, which means I am going to have to bribe the marquee here again when I do business so that I can build a boat. But that means if I bribe him, I actually won't ship any stuff. But the more stuff I build, the more points I get for Jen shipping stuff. So which of these cards am I going to use to, to do business? Let's see here. Because remember, I get the uh, icon bonuses. If I do this, if I do this for business, I just permanently have one extra dollar on hand for anything, and this will hurt the economy. This one means it's easier, it's cheaper for me to clear out red rubble, which I'm, which is you know you're going to want to clear out rubble eventually to do your. This one means I'll instantly get three influence, which means I'll fill back up. I'll waste two of those, but hey, I'll earn another point. This one gives me another blueprint. This one decreases the economy. This one decreases the economy. Um, it gives me money or makes it cheaper to clear out rubble. This one would instantly let me do a church bonus and would increase my ability. But here's the problem. Remember, my business is only size two. I can only have two cards in my portfolio. By playing a card, I'm going to have to remove one of these cards. So, so it maybe makes sense to do this one because I don't want to keep this guy around anyway because he does nothing for me. He increases my influence by zero. So I think I'll do this one. I am going to do business. I'm going to play this card. That means all these other cards, they'll stay in my hand for lates. All righty. So this is a card. I am not using it to spend influence to go up to the uh, castle. I am doing business. I'm expanding my business. So this is a one that slides down. Now, I don't have room because I only have two. So this one, I'm just going to remove from the game. Just gone. And I'm going to slide this one in. And as I'm sliding it in, I get another blueprint, which is not worth anything. But the more blueprints I have, the more state buildings I can build. Do I want a green or a blue? You know what? I already have a green, uh, blue. Let's go on ahead and take a green. Although I can take as many of one color or the other as I want. So I got a blueprint. Then this slides down. And um, now my prestige earning has dropped. But I've done the card. Now I either get to sell stuff. So I could sell things now. I could sell my gold and make six bucks, or I could sell my books and make five bucks. But instead, I am going to use my books to bribe the Marquis to build another ship. It is this ship. This is um, this ship, since it's a size two, requires two different goods, but I have a discount, so it only requires one different good, which means I'd have to give up my gold. But if instead of, well, let's see, now I could build this. That means I'd have to get rid of this, but I don't mind getting rid of it because it doesn't do anything for me anymore. So then I've got two ships. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, right, so I need to get rid of this because I can only have two cards because my business is small because I haven't cleared out enough rubble. So I am building this, right? So in it comes. Uh, it costs me two, but I have a discount. So it only costs me one, which is this gold. So I've sold that. I don't have anything in storage anymore. And as it goes in, the economy increases by one, and we do another influence, which means I get one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven. But all of that's going to waste. I only get to move up one, but hey, I scored another point. So I can make tons of influence, but I'm already at the top. I need to burn this influence. Ah, see, now that's interesting. I spent money to build this, but last turn, how much money did I spend? If I had burned influence, like one, two, three, if I had, um, I would have three more bucks right now because I burned a lot of influence to build that building. Then when it comes here on this turn, I've got um, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and boom, I score my point. That would have been much smarter. I should have used some of my influence, the money to build my building, because I knew I was going to get more influence right away. 
And that gave me another point. So I now, my business is full. I have two buildings. And remember, I get to activate two briberies, but I have no more goods. So I can't bribe anybody else. My turn is done. Um, the economy is maxed out. It's very, it, now it costs five bucks plus whatever the rubble is to build. Also, this economy value um, affects other things as well. Uh, it increases the cost of various things. But anyway, so that was my core turn. I triggered that guy that, what did it do? I've totally forgotten. Um, all right, oh, it gave me a blueprint. And then I, I bribed him with my next to my last good, and I spent my last good to build a second boat. I've got two boats now. That increased me all the way back up. And now I'm hoping that on Jen's turn, she is going to try and make some money by shipping all her goods, because she could ship one, two, three goods on my ships, which will score me three points, and it will make her a lot of cash. So I'm willing to bet that's what's going to happen. And now, at the end of my turn, because all that came off of one card, let's see, I've got to refill things. Although, no, I didn't take anything off the board, did I? No, I, oh, this goes away, so it's unblocked. Oh, and I have to take a new card. Um, you know what? I'm completely out of stuff. So I could take this, which if I use this, I could fill up with tools, but I make tools in my one shop, so I don't know if this is good for me. Although this also says, as long as I have this power, I can sell tools using my ships for twice as much money. So if I take this as a power... But what I got to think, do I want to go visit somebody? Um, all three visitors are out here. Or do I want to take them for bonuses? Um, I think I will take this. I do like this. All right, so I'm going to take this one. It adds to my hand. And that means a new one is revealed. And now this is another event you can sponsor, which uh, gives you a choice. Well, you can either do a build without having to spend prestige, or you can do a public building without having to spend prestige. Or it makes it cheaper by $1 for you to remove um, brown cubes. Or, and it reduces the economy. So it does several things. Anyway, that was my turn. Much quicker this time. Jen's turn now. First of all, she has no Navy, so nothing's going to come back. Jen now has to choose what she's going to do. And yes, she is broke. So I think she is going to take advantage of my Navy, which means she's going to do business. She plays one of these cards to get the benefit off of it. And um, right, she will pay this one. This one that she picked up last turn. It slides in. This is her first business expansion. It lets her take a cube of her choice from this collection down here. She's already got a brown. She'll go on ahead and take a blue. Now, later on, if she just takes a red, she will have completed a set, and she will make her business empire that much bigger, and it will give her another benefit. By the way, Jen's the purple player, but my prototype didn't come with purple cubes, so I'm just using the cubes of another player. So just bear in mind, it's a prototype. Anyway, so Jen gets a cube of her choice. Her prestige options of gaining prestige have climbed. She's done with that card. Now, she can either use all these goods to bribe officials or she can send stuff overseas. You better believe she's going to send stuff. She's going to send two books, all of her books, because remember, she generates more books over here. So that's going to make 10 bucks for her. And does she sell her gold? No, she'll keep her gold as a wild card because it gives her more flexibility. She'll also spend this on the other ship. So Jen just made 15 bucks for Rial. So she can put that into another shop and keep on building her empire. And I, in the meanwhile, I just scored three points. One, two, three. Yay! And so we flip these to indicate that the ships have set sail. Once a ship is filled up, you know, it could take, I mean, the ships get much bigger. They ultimately get to where they can hold four things, and it might take a couple of turns before they get completely filled. Once they're completely filled to capacity, you flip everything. That's when the player who owns the ship scores the points, and now nothing else can go in there until that player's turn comes around again, at which point these go away and they've returned back home. So, Jen, she did some overseas. She made some money so she can build another building. And now, at the end of her turn, I scored some points off it, she is going to grab another one of these cards. Uh, I think she likes this one. Which uh, means it's cheaper for her to clear out brown rubble if she locks this in as a special power. Or it means she can sponsor an event. Now, um, normally, when you go to the palace to visit a royal personage, you have to spend influence. And I showed you how that worked before. But instead, if you go to the palace to sponsor an event, you have to pay money. How much money? 
It depends on how much the economy is. There's a reminder right here. If you're going to sponsor an event, you have to spend money equal to the current treasury economy level. So Jen could spend five bucks to trigger a build action or a state or you know, a shop building or a, a full state building action, which means she would not have to spend privilege to um, you know, go build it the way you saw before. So anyway, Jen takes that card for herself. Does anything else need to be refilled? No, because that's all Jen did. So that was her turn. And so back to me, back to my turn. Hey, you know what? It's my turn. My ships have come home. All of these go away. My ships are now ready. I have no goods to put on these ships though. And um, I better start doing something. Now, I could um, generate stuff from my, uh, and that would generate one tool for me. But that's not really great. If I had taken this upgrade, this means one of my shops can generate a bonus thing. So I'd be able to generate two goods instead of one. That's not really exciting. Um, maybe, maybe I want to chase after building a state building now. Maybe, because both Jen and I are looking at this column. Oh, oh no, no, no. It's not the column. It's brown. Jen wants browns. I haven't built a brown building. Uh, but Jen's built in D. Nobody's right. So do I want to maybe get a decree so that I can, I mean, heck, maybe if I just take this decree, every building I build for the rest of the game is worth an extra point. That's pretty nice. Um, I haven't built in C. I haven't built in B. I've built in A. There's no benefit for A. Uh, and Jen's already built in D, so she's on track to get that. Unless there are still one, two, three, four places to build in D. I could build in D. I could try to take this and try to snag those points off from underneath her. Um, although, right now, the cheapest place in the world to build, well, this row got cheaper. This column is still cheaper because Jen cleared that out. So these are the, probably the cheapest places to build. So I might want to think about that. Or I might just want to think about moving the clergy up. Um, and remember, I've got tons of money. Um, even though I don't have any money on hand, I've got access to one, two, three, four, five, six if I want to burn all of my prestige, because I can build prestige back up really fast. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there any place that I could build for only six bucks at this point? I don't think anything's that cheap yet. Uh, or particularly because the economy is booming. It's a minimum of five. So yeah, there's no place I can build right now. But remember, it doesn't cost money to build the state buildings. It instead just costs state officials. But I haven't put any state officials out either. I've just focused on this boat thing. I really need to, to change my plans up. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there. Still, we have barely scratched the surface. There is so much more to go. I mean, we're just barely into it. But I, I wanted to play at least this far to show you that turns can go pretty quick. Sometimes terms are big, long, complex things. Sometimes they're really quick, simple little things. The game ebbs and flows, but definitely over the course of the game, we get more and more powerful. As we start getting better and better cards and um, you know things get cheaper and cheaper to build because more and more rubble has been uh, filled out, um, we have more and more prestige so we can go visit the aristocracy. The game just escalates and escalates and escalates um, right to the end. Here is a reminder of what you score points for at the end of the game. You score points for your boats. You score points at the end of the game for your sets. You score points for your buildings based on the public buildings. You score you um, any money you have left over is five to one plus um, you any press or influence you have you turn that all into money and then five to one money at the end of the game. You score points for any decrees you collected along the way. You score points for blueprints. Because every time you complete a blueprint, when you make a state building, you put it over here. Whoever has done the most blueprints, whoever, i.e., whoever has built the most state buildings at the end of the game scores 15 points. In a two-player game, second place is five points. So building state buildings, if you build more than anybody else, can be a big deal. And then you also get points... Oh, you also get points, I'm sorry, for building the most of each type of building. There's a reminder, the most blue buildings, six points for first place. The most brown buildings, nine points. So you're trying to build a lot of the same type of buildings um, as well. So that's an important thing. And then last thing, any royal favors you have left over. I've already used one, but I think if I recall correctly, these are two points of pop. So every time you use one of these royal favors, you're throwing two points away. So there are lots of things you can score points for. That's it, folks. That's Lisboa. And now... <laughs> Phew, if you would like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the little eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.